Okay, so this morning, my husband is, was supposed to be preaching this morning, Chase. If you're new here, my husband is Chase. My husband and I are pastors here. So glad you're here. Uh, he is at home in bed. He came down extremely sick last night. So you can pray for him. Uh, but man, here's what I love. How the Lord works, even when circumstances are not, not what we expect, right? Um, so awesome. And I love being a part of the local church where God moves and speaks and does things. And so that are so much bigger than us and so much more out of our control. It's awesome. It's so good. Um, and so this morning, this is Kim. If you haven't met Kim, Kim and Jeff are part of our, if you haven't met Kim and Jeff, oh man, they're incredible. Um, and the Lord is speaking to Kim and preparing Kim for this morning. It's the God that we serve, right? He's so good. Uh, and she had no clue until 930. <laughs> but the Lord is totally speaking and praying. So this morning we've, we believe that the Lord's got something powerful for us. And so Kim is going to share and speak and give testimony and then speak what God is from the word, teaching, and challenging her, but then I really believe is for us today as a church. Um, and then after that, this morning, we're going to have a time of corporate prayer uh, together for needs in our body. And so I'm going to let you go and preach. I'm going to pray for us. So Father, I pray for Kim. God, I pray for uh, you to be glorified. God, we pray for your word that as it is so powerful, God, that it would just encourage and pierce our hearts. God, it would speak life and bring hope. God, you would do what only you can do through your word today and by your spirit. And so, Father, we give you space to move and work. God, our hearts are ready. Our ears are ready. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, well, welcome. Um, thank you, Holly. That was... Uh, just really, really amazing. Um, yeah, so as she mentioned, um, I found out I was going to preach about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> um, but um, God has been doing something like incredibly, incredibly powerful in my life, in my family life, um, in Jeff's life. And um, I want to start today um, by reading the scripture. If you have your Bibles or on your phone, um, let's open up to Acts 12. Um, and uh, I'm going to read through it and then the kind of circle back. <clears throat> so Acts 12, we're going to go um, 1 through 10. It was about this time that King Herod arrested someone who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. And when he saw this, he met with approval among the Jews and proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival on unleavened bread. And arresting him, he put him in prison, handed him over to, the, uh, to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. And Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. And we're going to circle back to that. But the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, the night before, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side of the head and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said. And the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. He was obedient. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea what the angel was doing and really, and, uh, really was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. 
that iron gate, it opened for them by itself, and they went through it. And when they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Um, this sermon today is going to be praying through to break through. And um, circling back to 12.5, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Um, I, I've had this moment um, a couple weeks ago. So... For those of you who don't know my story and Jeff's story, um, I don't have the time to go through all the details, but um, we are sinners. And there is every sin and trauma imaginable in our background and in our history. Um, we spent... I have spent the bulk of my 52 years not believing in the Lord, not walking with the Lord. Um, I am divorced. Um, in our marriage, there is a history of abuse. There is a history, so, so many things. And um, there was a period that I came to know the Lord about 10 years ago. Um, for about a year and a half, my life had completely imploded. My family fell apart. My marriage fall, fell apart. I didn't know the Lord. And I spent about a year, a year and a half, most days, getting up, putting a smile on my face, putting on makeup, taking my son to school and coming home and collapsing in a fetal position on my floor and wailing snot wiped across my face, tear mixed with tears. About two weeks ago, I was doing an Advent um, devotional. And one of the days talked about um, coming up to your watchtower and waiting on the Lord for unanswered prayer. Jeff and I were doing this together, and it was just like I was struck by lightning because Jeff and I looked at each other, and we were like, we have huge prayers in our life, prayers for unsaved children, prayers for our marriage, prayers for just so many things. And we looked at each other, and I was like, there is not a single prayer that we have been praying for that is not actively being answered right now in our life. There's not a single prayer that I'm, I mean, it's not like everything has been answered, past tense. But there's not a single prayer that we have been fervently consistently praying for for the last 10 years, 15 years, that isn't actively being answered right now. And it just, it blew my mind. Because I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, it was just, he's actually answering my prayers. And... Then a couple days later, <clears throat> I came to I came to this devotional, which is on Acts five twelve, and it says Peter was in prison awaiting his execution, and the church had no human power or influence that could save him. Do you guys have situations in your life right now that seem humanly impossible? 
humanly impossible. But help could be obtained by way of heaven. So the church gave themselves to fervent and persistent prayer. So I want to... I just want to share today both its combination of the word and but but an active testimony of the miracle and the hope of believing in prayer in impossible situations in praying through to breakthrough in not giving up um, and in the last half hour as I was preparing the sermon <laughs> um, there were three things that really jumped out at me about prayer. Um, one is that one part about prayer is that it seems earthly impossible, right? Those prayers that seem like my marriage is never going to get healed. I am never going to get healed from the woundedness of my childhood. My loved one is never going to come to know the Lord. Or maybe I don't feel that I am ever going to be able to trust in the Lord. Prayers, an aspect of prayer is that they seem earthly impossible. A second aspect that, that the Bible and the Lord calls us to is this word earnestly. <clears throat> so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. And we're going to look at what that looks like sometime. And then the third aspect is that, yes, we are called into earnest prayer, but it's all God. It is all about God. And I'm going to jump really quick um, to Romans 8.26, because what came to mind is that <clears throat> Romans 8.26 says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. He meets us where we are. We don't know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So I cannot tell you the number of times that I have prayed for something, that I am praying for something. It gets answered but not the way that I think it's going to look. And that's where God's sovereignty comes in. That's where God's sovereignty comes in. So um, the earthly possibility, you know, if I go back to the scripture in Acts, let's see, I might have lost it here. Um, so Peter's in prison. He's in chains. I, I love this part where it says, um, so King, King Herod arrested him um, and arrested people who had belonged. Oh, King Herod arrested someone who belonged to the church um, intending to persecute them. And he had uh, James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval, so Herod's getting, Herod's doing ruthless things. He's persecuting Christians. He's killing Christians. And he's getting rounds of applause. The world is saying, great job. So he's getting encouraged and because of this encouragement, when he saw that this was met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. So, <clears throat> <sighs> 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 
Have you ever had something going so wrong in your life and it seems so insurmountable and people around you, like maybe, <clears throat> I've had someone close to me, very, very close to me, that um, doesn't know the Lord and feels the need, not just with me, but feels the need to put other people down in conversation to build himself up. And a lot of us do that. Um, but this person has put me down repeatedly, um, not really thinking about what it was doing to me. He was, this person is thinking about needing approval for himself. So I see that heart motive, but it has been so hurtful. And so there's been times that I have felt that everyone around me was gossiping about me. And, you know, I think about, I, I don't know what may be going on in, in your life, but sometimes when something really painful is happening, it just seems like it's made worse because it's, it feels like it's not just happening to you, but the people around you, your circumstances, it feels like people in, are in agreement against you, right? And so there's this earthly impossibility about that. And the scripture goes on, you know, Peter's in prison. Um, and I love this in verse seven, suddenly, um, well, actually, look at this. Peter was sleeping, right? Peter's sleeping. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in on the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. <laughs> Quick, get up, he said. And the chains fell off. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. So there's a couple things that are, that are jumping out at me here. One is that Peter was asleep. It's really showing the sovereignty of the Lord, okay, that we are called into fervent prayer, but ultimately, like, God can come into your situation, and he breaks chains. He breaks strongholds. He gets rid of lies. Another thing in this is that it was just earthly impossible. Um, and, and also Peter's obedience. The angel said, put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. Right? So... There, there's, there's so many different aspects of prayer. There's believing. There's being consistent. There's praying through to break through. Praying without ceasing. But there's also listening. When, when you know, what does your time with the Lord look like? Are you listening to the Lord? Because he comes to us lots of times in those still small whispers. If, we, if we're listening to him and we hear him say something, then be obedient in it. Um, 
I love Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea what the angel of the Lord uh, was doing was really happening. So in the midst of this, of his prayers being answered, of the doors flying open, of of him coming out of, of, of prison, Peter had no idea what was happening. I mean, that's another thing that, that I can say that, I, that I've experienced is that when, when this moment came a couple weeks ago, when Jeff and I looked at each other and we're like, oh my gosh, like all of our prayers are actively being answered. It didn't feel like that. There are so many times in the last 10 years that I'm like, this feels hopeless. This feels like there's no end. Like, where is God? I don't know where I'm looking at. I don't know where each of you guys are today, but I feel like God just wants to say, don't give up hope. Be fervent. He is with you. He is there. He is answering your prayer. It is in his timing It's going to look like what he wants it to look in a way that's going to glorify him. He has not forgotten your broken heart. He weeps with you. Um... I love this quote by Charles Spurgeon about kind of my third aspect of prayer is that it's all God. Um, It says, emergencies call for intense prayer when the person himself becomes the prayer. Nothing can resist its touch. Elijah bowed to the ground on Mark Carmel with his face between his knees and he became the prayer. You guys. When you are down on the floor, when you're wailing, your physical presence, your physical body becomes the prayer. There is power in taking off your shoes, standing on holy ground, physically getting down, physically surrendering. There's power in that. Spoken prayer is not always needed. For prayer can often be too intense for words. In the case of Elijah, his entire being was in touch with God and was aligned with him against the powers of evil. And Elijah's evil enemies could not withstand this kind of prayer in human form, something that is greatly needed today. Wordless groans are often prayers that God cannot refuse. So I guess I just want to stand before you. This is not polished. This is more real-time manna. But I want to stand before you and say there is so much that you may be going through that I, I don't know your experience, but... Jeff and I have walked through wrecked marriages. We've walked through the divorce. We've walked through broken spirits. We've walked through abuse. We have walked through incense. We have walked through, I don't know. I like, I could just go on and on and on. And I want to stand before you and say, there is hope for your prayers regardless of how impossible they seem. 
But I think the Lord wants to speak into everyone's heart. There's, <clears throat> our prayers don't have to have words. Our prayers don't have to look perfect. Our prayers don't have to be rolling off the tongue with Christianese, right? We, we have an amazing prayer team in this church. We have prayer warriors. And I frequently feel so embarrassed when I am standing with them or praying next to them because I don't have that. I didn't spend my life in the church. It doesn't sound perfect. I can't get up and just raise my hands and like have the smooth words coming off, but God knows my heart. He hears me when I'm on the floor groaning and wailing and he has answered and is answering my prayers. <sighs> Jeff and I come from families that a couple generations back were walking with the Lord, but our immediate families growing up did not. We didn't grow up in the church. And so our blended family, we have six children. Um, our youngest son, Ulysse, is here with us today. Um, he is walking with the Lord. I have, we have two other children who have come to accept the Lord in the last year. It's three down, three to go. I have a niece, Sophia, 13 years old, lives um, in Arizona, and reached out to me, uh, <laughs> reached out to me like a month ago and said, hey, Kim, like, I've been watching you and I want to accept the Lord and I want to be baptized and I want to start coming to church. And I've been dialoguing with her about that and <sighs> so beautiful. The words, I got a text. I said, I really want you to find a church to go to, you know, in Arizona because you need community, you need fellowship. And so I got a text from her one night on Tuesday night. She said, Kim, I went with friends for the first time to youth group and there was worship and everything. <laughs> I said, that's so amazing. That's so amazing. I think how I want to wrap this up here, um, and Holly, I'm, and Kyle, I'm just going to, I think I want to have a time of corporate prayer and testimony. Um, are we, do we have time for some testimony to open that up a little bit? I, I just want to open up. Is there... Is there anyone that's in the midst of prayer or struggle or has had answered prayer that just wants to share that? I want to have a, an opportunity for that. And Holly could bring, bring the mic to them. Um, I... I have four older brothers, and um, my parents were probably, I don't know, maybe it goes generations back, I'm not sure, but they're first-generation Christians from what I know, and 
um, they did their best to raise us in the church. And I think I was the only one that continued going to church and my older brothers, um, I don't know, they just went out and sought the world and had fun and did whatever they wanted to. And just within, I would say the last year or two, one by one, they just slowly just came up empty in the world and needed something more. And it was like the oldest brother came back to um, just going to church and taking his family to church and then started praying for the next brother. And the brother called him and some random during COVID and the vaccine and was like, you know, I want, I want to come back to church. <laughs> so, and then the next brother, they started praying for the next brother and the next brother started coming back to church and we were just down in Oregon with our family for Christmas. And I'm not sure where, it's probably the brother that I grew up closest to, but I'm, you know, I don't know quite where he's at, but um, he's never been able to pray out loud. And I think Keith, we're there with my whole family and there's probably 15 of us. And Keith's like, Spencer, do you want to pray for a Christmas breakfast? And my brother like was like, all right, let's grab hands and it's like the brother who could never make it through prayer without laughing, like said a quick prayer to Jesus. And and it's just amazing to see what's happening mm -hmm. even in my own family. So Yeah, yeah. Is there anyone else? Mm. Um, I want to take a moment. Um I think we're going to have uh, a time of corporate prayer here, um, but I really want to take a moment, um, and I, I ask people to bow their heads and close their eyes for privacy, because I really want to ask if there is anyone who's just actually been praying, wanting to come to know the Lord, but been scared to, because that, that can be frightening, if that's anyone, and I... I'd love to ask for the courage for you to raise your hand just to invite the Lord into your life. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. I thank you so much for your grace, for your sovereignty. Father, sometimes it's really, really hard to believe that our prayers are really going to get answered. Even when we want to believe, and it's just, it took me by surprise. When you opened my eyes and showed me how much my prayers are just being so active, actively answered, and I and I thank you for that, Father. And I just <clears throat> help us to come to you being vulnerable. However we are, knowing that you meet us. You meet us wherever we are. Father, every single one of us needs prayer. We're, Father, we are in a fallen world. We are all sinners. We need you desperately. Help us to humble ourselves and come to you on bended knee and praise you and thank you in the midst of our circumstances. Give us the courage, the courage to believe in you, the courage to believe that you're going to turn all things for your good. regardless of the way that they look to us, you turn all things for your good. We just can't see it. Just like Peter didn't know what, what the angel of the Lord was doing even in the midst of it happening. Father, I pray for chains to be broken. 
I pray for iron gates to fly open. I pray, Father, for lies to be rebuked, to be ripped out at the root, for your truth to be watered and fertilized and spoken so that your truth grows in our heart and changes our perspective. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for all that you do for us. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. I'm gonna invite the prayer team to come forward. Um, And let me tell you, the Bible talks about how going before, when you've got a need and going to the elders and having them pray over you, the the Bible commands us to do that and calls us into that. And so we're gonna make space for that this morning. We're gonna have, Kyle's gonna lead us in worship. You can stand, you can sit, but we wanna make space for you to come and receive prayer. And it can be anything. It can be anything. The Lord doesn't reserve these times of prayer for something that is just big. Like it can be things that you're like, ah, I don't really think that's significant enough. And so we're gonna create this space. And let me remind you this, like God can do abundantly more than you can ask or imagine. And also in this, he can point you to him. And that so much of this is getting our eyes back on Jesus. So I'm gonna invite you and begin coming forward as Kyle play, pray, uh, plays and leads. And you can sit time, you can sit there and you can pray to the Lord and you can have wordless groans, you can pray out loud. Like this, this is a sacred space that we're gonna just give space for the Lord to do and to move and to speak. And it might be a little uncomfortable for some of you, and that's okay. Because comfortability isn't the place that we want to live in in life. Because in the uncomfortable, God can meet us. And as we listen, God can speak. Through someone else's prayer, through a song, through the word, through the spirit. He can speak to you. So right now, Jesus, we give you space. This is your space. You abundantly more than all that we ask or imagine. God, as we came in not knowing what we were going to expect to receive today, God, if we get more of you, would our eyes look to you as we walk out of this place? But right now in this moment, would you heal? Would you speak? Would you break chains? Chains that seem earthly impossible because we believe that you can do it. We believe that you can do it.